Hello everyone, we are back with Mr. Ismail Lilmalia, manager at the National Computer Board, as well as Mr. Kavi Vaidelinga, who is a Hello business everyone. analyst and research and development, also from the National Computer Board. Mr. Kavi, can you tell us a bit about the Open Data Initiative? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll leave the floor to Ismail because right. you will start. We have started more research uh, to follow the trend in other developing countries like uh, UK, Canada, to publish all the data sets published by government as open source. So we have started this quickly. And so this is a possibility for researchers, for mass media journalists and developers to access the data, which is open, and they can have build uh, apps or use the data for research. Okay, that's good. I, I think I will hand over to you and you can start your presentation. All right. So basically, we are starting with the Open Data of Mauritius. We have uh, the website is data.gov.org. Uh, it's hosted at the National Computer Board. <clears throat> we, the journey has started uh, some time back in 2017. We had the World Bank, we came to Mauritius to, to check whether we are ready for Open Data Readiness. They have prepared a report which was approved by cabinet in 2017. <clears throat> uh, further to this report, we have prepared a national open data policy, which was approved again in cap by cabinet for appropriate guidelines for ministries, departments, and parastatal to release government data sets as open data. As you are aware, uh, government produces a lot of data. Some of them, they are published on the statistics brochures. Some of them are published on, the, on their own websites. Some of them, they are not published at all because, you know, the reticence of government to publish everything. So now, that's, now that this is law in cabinet, so more and more parastatals and, and ministries are trying to adopt uh, the, the strategy. But still, we see year by year, it's going to increase a bit. So each of the ministry and parastatal, we have set up an open data team mainly one, somebody from administration and one technical person, so that they can supply us, the NCB, their data. Which we, we take this data and we wrangle it. Wrangle it, meaning we clean it up, we prepare it for uploading on our portal. So we are trying to promote, as usual, open data. We have to promote accountability and transparency, public service improvement, because all data is scattered everywhere around websites or six Mauritius. Uh, when we have a single source where you can get all the data and data in a format which you can download easily, uh, this is the, the main aim of this, so efficiency. We have a lot of open data which can be accessible public without any restrictions for usage and distribution, meaning it's open data, you can use it, you can transform it, you can use it uh, within an app or within a web uh, application. We have APIs. So these are some of the, some of the sectors of application uh, data sets we have. Transport, environment, weather, statistics, financial. <clears throat> uh, this year, we are going to concentrate on transport because we have, we have reviewed a bit other countries and we have seen transport data sets brings a lot of plus value. So why open data? I think it's quite obvious for everyone. It belongs to everybody, even if it's produced by government. It's been paid by public money, so we have a we have a right to we have a duty to share it. We can create a lot of economic value, provided uh, developers and researchers use it uh, correctly. The data has to be updated regularly for it to have uh, to make sense. Okay. So this is basically what we have. Right now, on, on the on the on the left of your screen, we have the government, which is producing data, and the data is going to be accessed by uh, a lot of categories of people, mainly businesses. We have also academia, students, and lecturers, and universities to take the data and to evaluate and to do research and to come to conclusions. We have also the media. And on the other side, we have people who are going to use data to develop something or to build upon this to produce something with economic value, like um, developers, gamers, municipalities. So at present, we have most of the data which is supplied by government. But our vision is we have to open the portal 
to also data from private sector. So this year we're going to start for the transportation sector. So we're going to get data from, let's say, private companies in transport. We are trying to encourage private sector to contribute more to the, to the portal. So the portal was launched in 2018. At that time, we, have, we had around 100 data sets. Right now, we have 300 data sets across different sectors. And okay, next. maybe you can have a look at the different sectors which we have data. We have agriculture. Agriculture is, is, a, big, is a big sector for other countries like uh, Trinidad and Tobago. You will see some applications on agriculture. We have education, environment, we have transport, tourism, trade, productivity. We have with some of the data sets, we need to update them because let's say, for example, tourism. We get data sets from Ministry of Tourism. We also get from MTPA or Tourism Promotion Authority. Sometimes the parastated body, the data is more up to date than the ministry. So this is an exercise we're going to cross-check probably these coming weeks to try to update and get the latest data for all these sectors. Okay, next. The next slide. Okay. Is it? All right. So this is an example. Once you click on a data set within a sector, this is one example we did for fixed speed cameras where we got the collaboration from the police. Uh, if you had a few months back, if you search for location of fixed speed cameras, there are a few guys from the community who did that uh, on, their own, on their own time, but it was not very up to date. So the police managed to give us, so we have all the data sets uh, for the speed cameras. We have the location, the latitude, longitude. This is what we have on the open data sets, tabular format. We have the same information on our geo, geo portal, which will, which will come back to later with Kavi. So once you have a data, you can you can download the data. You can you can download it there. You can even have. If you see at the top, you can download the data. You can do look search by the data. You can also have data API. It means you, you are free to use this data to use in an app or in a web uh, in a web application, and you can use this freely. So we go back to data transport. This is, we're going to concentrate on transport this year. We are trying to build a maximum of data sets uh, on transport. When you, have, when you have several data sets within a sector, it's very easy to, do, to compare data. For example, we can have the data, how many types of vehicles which are involved in accidents for a year. And also we have the evolution of accidents uh, over, over the last 20 years, over the last 10 years which researchers can use to do and correlate. We can also correlate this data for accidents with the number of vehicles which are circulating in Mauritius. So there are very good analysis which can be done using these data sets. For example, for the traffic, uh, journalists can use this data to tell a story. For example, we have number of vehicles over the years in Mauritius. We can correlate this with number of accidents every year whether it's increasing with the number of vehicles. These are stories or analysis which can be done very easily by anyone, it's free. An example which you have for open data, but this is not from Mauritius, this is from Trinidad and Tobago, right, Kavi? Yes. Yeah. So Trinidad and Tobago, they have put all their data on soils and cultivation, plants, bearlands and all that as open data on their portal. And people can go planters especially, they can go and have a look at, for example, this type of soil, what type of soil it is, their pH, and what, what kind of crops are appropriate to be planted on this type of region. This is something which is excellent, and we hopefully, we, maybe next year, this year we're in transport, next year probably we'll go to agriculture, and we'll try to get some of these data from Ministry of the Land Range Authority. There are different uh, ministries which accompany this type of data. Based on the apps which UK, UK has, has produced a lot, I don't know how many thousands of data sets, and people have been starting to use the data sets, especially developers, and we have noticed the apps that are using in the transport sector, we have four or five times more than other sectors. So you will see for UK, for example, transport is a very big uh, data set, 
which has a lot of applications for mobile apps, and I think it's the same case for Mauritius. For Mauritius, probably the next one will not be government spending or society. It might be probably agriculture or fisheries. So our portal is on open source, uh, Creative Commons attributions. We are using Drupal. Yes, is that right? right. The, the, the Drupal, Drupal server, which is hosted at the National Computer Board. So we don't have any license to pay. It applies also for the our geo, geo portal uh, yeah. server. So I'll pass on related to Kavi, who will talk a little bit about uh, the geospatial data, where you can, where you have the data, you have a few sets which are overlapping, and you have a few sets which are easier to use for people who can visualize on the maps. And okay, I'll hand over to Kavi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, just uh, to add uh, to what Ismail just said uh, about the licenses, software developers, you need to be uh, aware that the Creative Commons licenses is something uh, of uh, benefits to you guys. Because um, bear in mind that uh, data sets that are available in other websites, they don't, they are not published under such license. So. So tomorrow, if you're going to use other data as available, and maybe you won't be able to commercialize those data, uh, your app. That's the most interesting part of Creative Commons license allows you to use data sets from the data portal and commercialize your app. So this is something uh, of a big advantage because lots of people question us. So why do we need to replicate data? their own data in uh, the data portal. So two things that you need to know is like, one is in the, 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 the data sets are published under the Creative Commons license, and those data sets are in machine-readable format. And um, uh, as Mayan said earlier, those data sets generate their own API, so it will uh, ease the process of your app connecting to so those data sets for crude operations, that, that is, uh, you can create, read, update, and delete those data. So just, uh, just a few lines I did. So coming back to the uh, geospatial data, under the same open data initiatives, because uh, we, we previously launched the open data portal containing mainly uh, text data, data in format of CSVs, Excel sheets, etc. But under the same initiatives, we have we are now publishing uh, geospatial data, which is uh, more of uh, geographical information related data. And uh, basically the GIS uh, will address challenges across various uh, socioeconomic sectors. And uh, as you can see on the screen, um, it relates to infrastructure, government, uh, natural resources, transport, national security and uh, other uh, emergency services, and of course, agriculture and land administration. So since we have just started the portal, we are right now around 42 layers. So we have been able to cover all the uh, sectors, but hopefully with time, we get to all these um, sectors. So uh, right now, the uh, portal is hosted at the Governmental Line Center. Uh, which is under the NCB, and uh, we use open source technologies, or OS Geo technologies. Uh, the server runs on GeoNode and the Geo server, and it allows us to create, publish uh, layers for and maps also. So, as you can see, uh, layers can be published in format of vector layers and raster layers. So, uh, these are I won't go into technical details here, but uh, you can still see that afterwards. So uh, it's a common platform for collecting and sharing special data. And uh, it allows, uh, as you can see, it allows the community uh, at large to carry out data-driven initiatives such as development of mobile apps. You can analyze data. You can create your own innovative products through these uh, data sets. Um, Right now, we are having more than 40 layers and seven maps. Uh, all the layers, uh, actually, uh, right now, we have provide facilities for 21 categories. And the uh, layers, you can download them in various formats. 
you have S3 shape files, you have KML files, CSV files, and even other uh, other formats. So uh, yes, as I mentioned earlier about the APIs, for example, these is one data set which relates to uh, automatic teller machines around the island, and uh, it is hosted on the uh, open data portal, which uh, is run on the DCAN uh, uh, software, open source software. And as you can see, um, this is uh, the resource ID as I highlighted in, in, in yellow. This is the API generated by the, um, the, uh, the open data, the data portal. It is automatically created once the data set is uh, uploaded there. And this is, you can use that for uh, connecting your app to such, uh, to the data set. Coming back to the geospatial uh, data uh, layer. So these are examples of layer. For example, you can see um, you have uploaded uh, layers relating to gas stations and uh, layers relating to uh, ATMs around the island. Donc, all, all these uh, are available on the geo, geo portal. You can download them and use them for your personal purpose. The portal also also allows you to make maps. So maps are basically allows you to cross analyze across various layers. So, for example, you can analyze um, ATMs across districts. What are the ATMs available in districts? What are the gas stations nearest to you? For example, you are in the district of Savan. You want to see all the gas stations in the district of Savan. So, um, these layers will allow allows you to connect to your app and do such analysis. So all data are all data are available under the WFS and WMS. These are coordinates uh, uh, standards that have been applied to the uh, to the geo portal. You can have previews available for that, and uh, you can also um, configure those uh, data based on uh, format you want: GeoJSON file, KML file, etc. GeoTIFF. The most interesting part of geospatial data, guys, is about analyzing the the data itself. So, for example, um, this is one data set where you can see urbanization over the years. Okay, uh, the 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 red uh, part of it is uh, gives you an idea how uh, buildings and uh, developments has evolved over the years. So, this is uh, allows us basically to uh, do planning for the future. Imagine that such facilities would have been available some 30 to 40 years back. Our roads would have been bigger, maybe uh, everyone would have parking in their business facilities, etc. But right now it allows us to take more, uh, to take wiser decisions. So yes, one one th part of it uh, about geospatial data is adding real-time data, uh, with, uh, including IoT devices. As you can see, um, uh, I, Internet of Things are, are, are taking a, a major step uh, towards uh, getting data. And this can be used to capture geospatial data. Uh, this, this, uh, this small map you can see at the uh, top corner is about uh, phishing aggregating devices. And uh, from the boy, oui, boy, boy available at the sea. In the sea, so these are they are constantly pinging, and we are receiving the data. Uh, uh, we have the location of those uh, FADs. This is uh, real-time special data. So, uh, how do we uh, at the technical part at the back end? We we actually there are two software available to create those geospatial layers. One is ArcGIS, and one is QGIS. Our GIS is basically uh, a uh, commercial commercial, yeah. commercial software. And quite expensive. Yes, very expensive. And whereas QGIS is open source, so whatever you can achieve in our GIS, you can achieve the same thing in QGIS. Yeah, uh, actually, one of the motto of NCB is promoting open source. Yeah. So that's why we are using Q Quantum GIS. Uh, it's a very powerful software, guys. Um, this is one example. I'm not running the software. It's just. Uh, uh, a, a print screen of uh, what is available there. 
So this is a, a city around Port Louis, where you can see the rivers in blue and you can see the house. And uh, this allows us to do some uh, flood uh, processing. Uh, you can, uh, as you can see, once the processing is done, you can see those uh, houses are, uh, are yeah, prone flooded. <laughs> okay, so this. Yep. Yes, this is uh, the kind of uh, facilities that such software allows you to do. And uh, those who are interested, uh, they can still use the yeah. QG software because it's, it's free. You can download it and use it. But it's, uh, it allows us really to have an idea when there is a flood, what are the house that, are, uh, yeah. uh, that can be affected, impacted by this. So all this analysis can be done through the QGIS. Maybe if some of you are interested in this, they can contact us uh, for other Yes, shows. yes, yes, we can see about that. Yes. Right. So another part of it is uh, about digital terrain model analysis and, and digital elevation analysis model. So QGIS also allows us to analyze, uh, for example, this is analysis about the slopes on the mountains. Mm -hmm. So you can have various types of analysis, like we call that autography, and we have shapes in grayscale, and all these are available in QGIS and allows us to um, bring uh, more uh, decision. Yes, in decision making, meaningful uh, sense to your data. I leave the positive flow to smile for this part. Yes. So once we have done the, the QGIS and our geo portal, we have we have received interest from government. Right now, there is District Council of Mocha. They have mapped all the assets. They have fleet management. On top of that, they have the assets like pools, electric pools, trains, outdoor facilities like gymnasiums and parks. They are different buildings, and they have they have they have done this through a private company using ArcGIS. You can see at the top, this is what the, they are using the system, it's ArcGIS. So you can see some of the assets and the, the assets they can show whether it is broken or it's in the repair or it's new. So the government approached us and NCB is going to be working with local authorities and district councils to do this through QGIS because QGIS is free and they don't have any other licenses to pay. So basically, we'll have the we'll have the server, the unit server here at NCB or GOC. We'll be administering the the portal, and the local authorities will have access to uh, either uh, map all their assets uh, directly through a, through a web browser or through a mobile app. We also this is the first time NCB are trying to go and develop something. So we are developing a mobile app. You will see the city council asset collection. So we have around 10 we have municipalities and the city councils. So the mobile app will allow someone on the field to take the app and select which district council, select which asset, whether it's a pool or a drain or whatever it is. Once they set the they select the asset, they go close to the asset, let's say they pull, and they just press to get the longitude and latitude. And they enter other data like the asset name, asset code. If it is something which is not a, a single point, it's like a, like, let's say a football ground, which has multi points or like a drain. So they can repeat this along different vertices of the, of the assets. And once they do this, this automatically goes and updates our geonode. So this is something which we're starting and we believe that this is going to be a very important project. We are in the first phase of this, probably by next month we'll have achieved a lot more. So before we, before we end, we would like to have a little bit involved in the community. Right now, we are more geared towards uh, government and private status and all that. I think private sector, they have a lot of open data. Uh, some of them are resistant to give it out, but probably some of them, like transport, like we were thinking of agriculture, we are trying to get some of the data private sector. We encourage this. Sometimes we, we prepare data sets. We are not best placed to know which data sets are more valuable. So we welcome suggestions from from the community in general to propose, let's say we would like to have this type of data sets from which institution, and we will try to liaise with them and see that if there's a huge interest for this, it's time you publish them and give it to us. 
there's also uh, QGIS. I think we are using OpenStreet. We are not doing we are not using Google because of property and open license. But OpenStreet is uh, Mauritius is so small compared to other countries. I think we, we would welcome people who have time and who can contribute to developing OpenStreet, so that one day OpenStreet will be at par with Google Maps. So these are the contacts. I'll, I think there's one more slide. So next up, uh, we just talked about this crowdsourcing for obtaining special data. We are ready to prepare a small app and we're going to release it. And there are things which we cannot get very easily. An example is bus stops. The Ministry of Transport will give us uh, uh, bus stops, but not all of them. They will give us only when the fares when the fares change. So we miss some of the bus stops. We are trying to do some on our own, but we will appreciate help from the community. Like real time, if you have bus travel, bus routes, we are going to try and get. Uh, maybe, Kavi, you want to add anything? What applications do you have? I think we've talked about this. Yes. Adding aerial imagery. We have a lot of, in some other countries, you will see a lot of aerial imagery published by private sector, by individuals, not by government. Uh, so maybe some of you, you can you can supply this and we, we can we can point it on, a, on, on our map and we can see this is contribution of the community. Our target is to increase uh, every year by 100 years, and hopefully we're on a good track. So if there are any questions, we will just... Yes. So we thank you, and we we hope you have benefited from the session. And if there are any questions, uh, I will let uh, Grish... Uh, yes. We do have some questions. Uh, we have an amazing audience. So yeah, we have some from Sandy. Can you can we request for data sets to be made and what is a realistic timeline to expect? Can you what? To make a request for a data set, what is the realistic timeline? Oh no, no. If you make a request for a data set, if the data set is available somewhere in the Ministry and Empire State, well, I think we can get it very quickly. Okay. But you, but you know, sometimes uh, we are we, we are the hosting the data, but sometimes it depends on the decision of the the institution to release the data. If the data is something not very confidential, I don't suppose there are going to be any problems, and we are going to we are going to do the liaison between you and the institution. Uh, well, okay. Just to add to that, I encourage the developers if they need uh, data sets for the app, they can first come with a case. Uh, a scenario. So this means uh, what they're going to use the data for, how is it going to benefit the citizen. So we can use that to uh, As leverage, their, their to, leverage the institution. Yeah, to the institution so that they can release the data. Because as Miles said, uh, it's not always an easy task to get the data. If the data is already public, does not confidential, does not contain sensitive uh, information, then we can do the cleaning process. This is very fast. We have a team for that. We can do everything for the up to the uploading, but getting the data uh, it, it depends. It depends on the uh, how sensitive. Yeah, how sensitive it is. Or as I as I say, if the uh, stakeholder sees uh, that they are gaining uh, from the app, then most probably this will be as fast. And I, and I think the policy government and institution in principle should not refuse to give open data because this has been approved by cabinet. So that should not be the main issue. And you know government, we have just released a new portal. We are going in line with trying to open up the maximum of data and make it user friendly and let people use. So we don't anticipate any big problem. So if you have any data sets you require, let us know. Okay, I have another question. Uh, he's been looking for road accidents data with location, causes, date, vehicle type, number of casualties, but he couldn't find it. Can you recommend him where he can find this? Yes, uh, I, I know this is something very interesting. Very lo A lot of people are looking for that kind of data. But just let me tell you uh, something wonderful. Uh, well, it's never too late, but it is being done at the level of the uh, Commission of Police and the insurance uh, sectors. They are collecting, collecting the data. They have just started. I don't know if it's as from last year. But uh, the, uh, whenever there is an accident occurring, uh, there is the policeman with a tablet going on site, feeding all this information in their database. 
along and it's uh, it's something which is um, connected to the insurance also well um i don't know how far they are reaching that but uh hopefully uh we will approach the yes. uh, the ministry of the the, the police force and see if we can get some of these data because the problem was the data was not even collected that's why you couldn't see it. but i can guarantee you that such these data the collection of these data has been initiated and uh, hopefully uh, very soon we will have those data. because we have the accidents the we have the accidents we have the uh, uh causes of accident we have the types of vehicles involved in those accidents but the location of those accidents we we don't have it that's where we are going to see how we can plug the data from the uh, those stakeholders if i may add the police has given us the list of accident prone areas which we have already marked on our issue portal so we know where most of the accidents happen on the map but we don't know on which day and uh, this is not but we, we already have the list of accident prone areas Okay, yeah, we have uh, another statement or question. The data set shown on your graph ends in 2016. Can you expect the 2017 um, till 2020 data? And he, he, he's saying that uh, he shows that you agree that uh, these three years data will be more helpful. Yes, of course, uh, just to add to this, this is a project we have just initiated. So we had to start somewhere. So it was a very bulky task. So we had to retrieve data from the statistic mergers. And uh, actually, there are CISD officers posted in all those ministries. They are following up. And uh, we are doing the update. And uh, of course, uh, I'm sure those data are available. So if there is a request towards this, it will be definitely one of the priorities. But the process of updating has already started. And uh, I'm sure that this will be done uh, in the near yes. future and sometimes we can delay so by the time the data is prepared by the institution and by the time it gets approved by statistics motions there is a, there is a delay so this part we cannot uh, control but we are encouraging all mysteries to keep up with it okay uh, we have another question where do we find and access those data we, uh, we have given the initial data.gov.mu or geoportal. Wait, uh, just give us a minute. Ish, can you switch to the uh, full speaker? Yeah. The, the, the URL is already at the bottom, data.gov.mu.org. So, so this, yep. is, uh, this is for the open data portal. And uh, you can still have our geospatial data at the geoportal.gov.mu.org. So uh, you can, uh, these portal are already live, so you can access them and the data sets are available there. Yes, uh, another question from Sandy. How many of the data sets are updated in real time and which ones? In real time, right now we have only the, I the, think the phishing. The phishing, the funds, uh, fish aggregating yes. devices. But uh, we still working with the uh, MET services to try to uh, pull those data from their website. Yeah, yeah the weather, weather data. Okay, our infrastructure yeah. is ready to, to pull in any data, but it depends on availability. But I think with the growth of internet IoT devices, where we, are, we, we, we once we get the data, and like Kavi mentioned, weather. Uh, so it depends on a lot on what, what we get from the institutions, okay? Okay. Yeah, so yeah, it was, it's a great. Some of you, if you have any ideas on what kind of real, real uh, data will be valuable for some of you, this is also an area which you can suggest and you propose to us, which we'll bring along to the institutions to say there's interest for this kind of real time data. Uh, hey guys, uh, if I may add something, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Limalia and Mr. Vaichilinga. Uh, is there a way for our our audience, our viewers, to make those comments and suggestions? Uh, maybe uh, the National Computer Board has a, spe a specific email to contact uh, for to make those suggestions. Yeah, we, we listed the mail. Anyway, if you go on our website, nationalcomputerboard.mu, 
WWN CV.mu, at the end you'll have a section on open data and our issue portal. You can contact us through there, or you can just send, any, send us an email on PRD at NCB.mu. Uh, PRD is Planning, Research, and Development, PRD at NCB.mu, or you go to our website and you'll have all the contacts. All right. Uh, uh, Mr. Nemanja, yeah, I, uh, I might have one more question for you. Uh, as, as, as you know, I'm, I'm somebody who has been, uh, you know, really pushing for open data. I've been meeting yes. you guys in different of your seminars and all. I've, I, I, I've been asking a lot of questions. You might yes. know that. Uh, yeah. So I, I have a question uh, with regards to the Freedom of Information Act, uh, which is something every now and then is being mentioned. Uh, uh, so do you guys believe that a Freedom of Information Act would make uh, the frequent uh, will make the accessibility of open data a bit more frequent uh, because I, I saw there was a question uh, if, there was a question about uh, some of the data sets being as old as 2016 and then you explain the process about uh, uh, sorry. yes and then you explain the process about you know you need to get approval by statistics Mauritius and I'm pretty sure that's not an easy process uh, it has its flaws. So do you believe that the Freedom of Information Act, a well-defined one, could accelerate this process or make it easier? I think so, but, uh, but the, even the, without the Freedom of Information Act, uh, the, the, the government uh, through cabinet has approved that all ministries by law are supposed to provide the open data. But not all ministries are going at the same pace. Some of them providing much quickly. And you know, some of them, public officers, sometimes they're working on many projects. But mm -hmm. with the Information Act, of course, naturally, it will accelerate the process. But even before this, we already have an act uh, approved by cabinet, the open mm -hmm. source act, which encourages government and uh, ministries to provide this data. And we, the mentality is changing slowly, and we see more and more, like the police in the past, it was not easy to get data from them. But right now, they are collaborating with us, Ministry of Health. So. There are some good people, some of them are a bit lagging, but hopefully, uh, if there are any specific data sets which are missing or which are not up to date, just uh, give us a call or send us an email and we'll try our best to rectify. Sure, sure. All right. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure the local, uh, you know, the, de uh, the developers community in Mauritius are very much interested. I can see some comments about, uh, yes, a lot of developers are interested uh, uh, in the open data sets uh, so that they can, you know, make a maximum use of that. Yes, exactly. Just having data for the sake of publishing data is not meaningful. We want exactly. people to adopt and use it to produce yeah. something. Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Mr. Mr. Ismail and Mr. Kavi, we have a, we have we had an amazing audience. They are thanking you for your presentation. And as as local developers, they using open data. They think that uh, you are taking a great initiative with, with uh, open data. So yeah, I think that this was a great um, presentation. Thank you very much. I think right. it's good for now. Thank you. Thank you. you. Maybe you have some Thank few you. words to say at the end. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay.